Here recently, I was working on a mold base that I've been working on for a few weeks now. I mean, it's, I've ran hundreds of tool paths on this thing. And I had a carbide drill break off and I was a little overconfident. I thought I was just gonna pull the mold base out of the, of the X7, stick it inside the EDM machine and burn that thing out. And that just did not go the way I expected. And so it was honestly a pretty big disaster. It actually delayed a whole bunch of stuff. It delayed uh, the finishing of the whole, whole assembled mold assembly. And uh, I wasted about a day kind of messing around with the EDM machine. But I finally uh, got some good advice from a friend. And today I'm just going to show you guys kind of exactly what I did to get that broken carbide drill out. Luckily, I was just drilling a pilot hole for a bigger feature. But uh, if I would have needed to keep the part of the hole really small, I would have had no option but just to run the EDM slowly with a copper electrode using flushing. But anyways, let's get going. Let's head over the surface plate and I'll show you guys exactly what I did to get this thing so sorted out. So I broke a carbide drill and I broke it off. Uh, it's a screw length drill, luckily, and I broke it off, but I broke it off quite deep. Uh, it was a J drill and I broke it off almost an uh, inch 700 deep. So I cut this graphite electrode and I put it in the EDM and I'll tell you, it didn't do a great job. Now this is the first time I've actually had to burn carbide out. I have on occasion had to burn high speed steel uh, taps out, which is pretty easy, but man, carbide takes a long time. And so you can see I made this, this little copper electrode and I had it in the same type of holder. I cut this on our X7, just using a YG1 3 8 inch end mill, three flute, one of, the, one of our aluminum end mills. And you can see it, that's not polished or anything. That's just, that's right off the machine. It's pretty, pretty good. But look at how that carbide the carbide end mill burns at such a hotter temperature than the steel that when you put it in the electrode, it starts to change itself. Wherever the carbide is, it just burns super duper slow. It's, using copper is much better. What I should have ultimately probably done is drilled a pinhole through this and then ran flushing through the spindle so that we could have just got through just the carbide. I guess the machine doesn't really like to burn through two different types of material at once. It doesn't do well when the machine's trying to calculate all the, the logic for burning steel and carbide in the same cut. So yeah, it's out, it's clean. I ended up milling around it. Because of the nature of the feature, I was fortunate. I was able to use one of these Lakeshore carbide high feed end mills. And just look at this stick out. Not only, not only the stick out of the relieved portion of the end mill, but look at how much of the shank, you can see that I was getting some rubbing on the hole and I knew that that was the case, but I had to allow this to occur to avoid making the part, the, the feature oversized so that it could still be finished. So this all in all, this was, I called a buddy of mine that used to work for Mitsubishi and he just said, Jason, you're gonna have to do surgery if you wanna get that out the way you want it out. And so that's what it came to. What I ended up doing was just basically milling around this drill. The, 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 the J drill was just a pilot hole. And so you can see what I did is I just milled around it and I put a screwdriver in there and I wedged it. And you can see it kind of folded over here on the top because it was actually in this orientation with this being the top. But this is the actual carbide drill. And I don't know if you guys can see, but that's the actual drill tip. So I actually got this thing out. I milled down around it and just broke it off. And that's the original factory tip on that carbide drill. So pr pr pretty interesting situation. Long story short, I had noticed in the tool changer that the drill had a chip on it. And it didn't occur to me that, I think I was running at 6 thousandths per rev, something like that. I mean, I, it was a pretty solid, it was a pretty solid, uh, pretty solid bite for, for, for a small drill like that. And I, the tool path was running. It was a proven tool path that I ran in the past. And so I walked away and I was, I was actually over here at this right here. I was right here at this surface plate setup, checking something. And I don't know if you guys can see, but, uh, well, I guess I'm not gonna pick it. This is where the, the X7 is. And so by the time I heard it making noise, I started heading to the machine and within a step or two, I just heard the, the, the drill break off, which sucked, obviously. Um, but I was 
I didn't realize that in all the times I've ever broken drills or taps, they've always been, for the most part, high-speed steel. And so to have one break off that was carbide, I thought we were just going to slap this thing in the EDM and we were going to start burning and this thing would be you know burned out in 20 minutes. Well, after an hour and a half, we had only gone 300 thousandths out of you know one inch 700, one inch 800, whatever it was. This was a screw length drill. And so I knew something else had to be done. And so that's what we ended up doing. But anyways, I just thought I'd show you guys, this was the solution. We tried the EDM, which we were very, for I'm very fortunate to have that machine for making uh, molds. But at the end of the day, a super small diameter, high feed end mill. And just for the record, this tool, I think we run them about, I don't know, maybe 300 surface feet. About, I think I was running this one in this case, about four and a half thousandths depth of cut, uh, a full width of cut, and I wanna say about five, four and a half or five thousandths feed per tooth. And so just just taking little, a little itty bitty bite, the machine's running pretty fast. And uh, one of the tricks is that I used a boring operation, a 2D bore inside a Fusion 360. And the downside to using the cycle is that when it gets to the bottom of the hole, it's actually gonna like lead out back towards the center of the hole and obviously, if you've got this thing, if you're going around this thing and you're slotting around it, you can't, you can't just retract inward towards the drill bit or you're going to crash. So what I did is I watched the display on the machine. And when I got to, I want to say it was like, I don't know, one inch, 790. I can't remember. It's over, written on the window over there. But when, I, when I got to whatever that depth was, I waited until about 10 thousandths before it got to its final pass because it's counting up. I, you know, it's, it's counting up pretty slowly. And I just did a feed hold. I stopped the machine and I just retracted the Z up before it began its lead out. And uh, I was able to get a screwdriver down in there, wedge this thing loose and on to the next operation, rock and roll. Hope you guys got a kick out of this. Hope you learned a little something. Hope it helps you make uh, parts or learn to program CNC machining. All these little tips I've found over the years at watching all these different guys, whether it's the John Saunders, Robin Ranzetti, Stephen Goddess winners, Peter Stanton's, uh, Av, uh, this old Tony. You always pick up, I have found that I always pick up little tips that sooner or later you have the opportunity or the need to apply them. And uh, just, just it's, nice to, it's nice to see the, uh, the sharing of information and knowledge. So, all right, guys, that's that. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.